Yeah. But man, there was pressure. Like, God, I remember walking in. So when I went to my first Mooseheads camp, I'll never forget this. I walk in. There's like the first day. There was like five dressing rooms because it's no there's no cuts so there's like you know there's almost like 60 kids oh yeah and i go up to the front i'm like hi i'm justin belanger i'm here to try out and they're like okay yeah great belanger here you go room four i'm like okay great let's do it so i I (laughs) will so i walk into the room i walk into the room and i'm like okay room four perfect here it is and i'm going because everyone has their um their name on the locker so i walk in i'm like all right belanger no belanger no belanger no belanger no so i'm looking around no belanger so first day like when you go to these camps you just as much as you want to be seen you don't want to be a nuisance no you just want to get on the ice work your bag off go home make it you don't want to be the guy going hey um i don't see a belanger stall anywhere dude where do i sit so I don't remember that. So then, I, so I, so then, everyone was the first day of camp. Everyone's so busy, so I'm not gonna bother anyone. So I just go to room one, three, one, two, three. I skip four, and then I go to five because I'm just looking for Belanger anywhere. So I go to all five rooms. There's no Belanger anywhere. So eventually, I just asked the trainer. I was just like, "Hey, like I'm Justin Belanger. Where do I sit? Like I, I was told room four. There's no." Like, where do I go? Yeah. And even he didn't know. No. So I remember I just, I, I stuck with room. I think it was room four, whatever. And I I just, I pulled up like a, like a chair. Just <laughs> oh. like, it was like a, it was just like a chair. Yeah. Right by the washroom. I didn't even have a jersey. I was, hey, I was like, try, the trainer was like, hey man, I don't have a, because everyone's jersey yeah. was hung. So I didn't even have a stall. And it was just the worst, exp- like the worst way to, uh, <laughs> and like, that's I, like nightmare fuel. Man. Oh, it was awful. And you, you go into the room and you see guys names up there that are already like on the team yeah. and like in their stall, they have like a box of, you know, 10 fresh seas or back then it was Bauer, fresh 10 Bauer sticks. Oh. And you see them come out with the sticks and they take them out of the, the, the wrapper and they're like, this isn't my curve. I don't like, like, and they're complaining about, like, the 10 free sticks they got. I don't even have a stall. Oh, it's just we, Would your face, like, rat, would you just beat rat, or did you just try to, like, put it away in your mind? You just got to put it away. You just have to, you, you, honestly, you can't even use it as fuel. You're just, like, you're embarrassed. Mm. You, you don't know anyone. There's a bunch of, like, kids from Quebec there. Yeah. You don't know any of these guys on the team. You know some guys on the team, but, like, maybe they're in a different dressing room. I just remember it was in Cole Harbor Place. I don't know if you've ever been in that th- th- those rooms, but they're not the prettiest. And there's just like a little corner right by the washroom. And the corner is not that big. So every time someone had to go in and take a piss, I'd have to like do the shimmy shuffle so they can get through the door. Yeah. And I'm, oh, it was it was just bad. <laughs> just a bad first couple days. But I, I, so that first year, I didn't make the team. But I made it all the way to the last cut, so I was the mm. I was like the fourteenth forward cut or something like that. So going from not having a stall to the last cut, I'll take that. Definitely. Did they move people out so you got a stall like halfway through camp? Because like, you're like, oh, that guy just got cut. Let me just slide in here. You stuck with your chair at the washroom. I stuck with my chair. I, at that point, I wanted to like stick it to them. Mm-hmm. Like I was almost mad Chip at them. Chip on the uh, shoulder. Exactly. I was Definitely. like, no, no, no. I don't need a stall. I'm going to sit right. Like I remember there was a point where a guy was like, oh, no, we can just move you down to room four. Yeah. But no, I'm because the, the rooms were divided up into teams. Yeah. So my team was dressing room four. We wore the green jerseys. Room one wore the red jerseys. Yeah. Room two, you know, so the shitty practice jerseys. Yeah, the, yeah. Ja- the practice jersey. So I was like, no, like this is my team. I'm in room four. I'm staying in room four, and I'm sitting in this chair. And I remember I I used it at that point as fuel. Like after you get out there and you skate and you you get a couple hits in, you joke around with mm. your team. Like you feel a little bit more comfortable. And by the end of it, the boys are like making fun of me in the corner. But that's what you want. You yeah. want to get chirped. That that means you're accepted. Yeah. And that's the, maybe not today. They think it's it's bad. But you know, back then, if you got chirped and made fun of, like, boom, you're in. That's great. Yeah. Because then you just give it right back. And I remember as kids were getting cut, you just the confidence goes. So kids are leaving. You know, the trainer goes in, and goes, hey, like Billy Dean uh joe coach wants to see you and right away you go boom they're getting cut 
and then as kids are going, that just gives you more confidence throughout camp. You go, okay, so I do kind of belong here. Okay, so at least I'm better than those three guys. And then you find out, okay, nine guys got cut. Okay, now 20 guys yeah. just got cut. Okay, now 40 guys just got cut. And it's basically the team. It, it did suck being the last cut, but going to play junior A after that gave me a lot of confidence knowing I'm one cut away from being on a Q team. Yeah. And then I had a really good junior A year that first year just from the confidence from that definitely that uh that first q camp yeah because it's like if you get the first cut and you go to junior a like you're in the dumps you're like what are we doing here but if you make that last cut like those cuts are immense for your confidence so oh yeah by the end of it you're just rolling into junior a like i'm about to light this league up and then you just ride that all season long and give it another go yeah but if you're that first cut you're battling that season yeah and it was cool because it was in my backyard. And mm-hmm. I remember the guy on the team, Jared Grant, uh, was on the team. And he was from, he was like a, a lock. He was on the team. And he lived in the North End. So all the practices were in Cole Harbor. And back when I was living at my parents' place, we had um, an extra car. But usually with that, the moose heads, they have like a billet guy that picks everyone up. Mm-hmm. But me and him, most of the billets, they live in Dartmouth and Cole Harbor. Me and Jared were the only guys over in Halifax. And when we had to start going to the practice, because training camp's like a month long. It's it's it was oh a, really? Oh man, it's long and grueling and not fun. And I remember when it came down to like the last, you know, twenty ten cuts or whatever. Uh, my dad went away for work, so there was an extra car at the house. So I got to get the car, and then I just went to go pick up Jared. Then me and Jared went over to camp together, and it made me feel better knowing that me and a guy already on the team were rolling to camp together. Definitely. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. And Jared was a really well liked guy on that team. He was he's just he's the he's the local guy, so everyone always kind of just went to him for advice for things to do in the city. He's just a well liked guy in general, but it just gave me even that little bit more confidence going to pick up Jared than me and Jared rolling the coal harbor together. Yeah. It's like going, when you go to a party and you don't know a lot of people, but you know, one of the big dogs there and you kind of just like attached to the hip. And mm-hmm. then the rest of the night, you just like, you, you know, you get that respect because you know, the one guy you just, whatever you can do. Yeah. Any, like any advice for these guys, like the names that we just lift up, listed off or anyone that's like a, like an invite to go to these camps, just f- like find a way Maybe you already have all the confidence in the world. So maybe don't take this advice if you're one of those guys. But I definitely didn't have the confidence rolling in. I had a good midget career. I was like a good midget player. But going into the camp, I just didn't have that confidence right out the bat. But find ways to gain your confidence quickly. And ways you do that is like, uh, get, don't even worry about scoring. Just like get into the game quick. Give a hit. Take a hit. Um, you know, you know, I don't know, I don't want to say snow a goalie, but just like find a, <laughs> find a way to be involved in the game quick. Even, I don't want to say take a penalty, but just like do something to get noticed quickly yeah. because that'll get you under your feet. And yeah. then you just start to realize that it's just another hockey game or it's just another scrimmage because all these guys have been playing hockey their whole life and they'll go into these camps and forget that they're just playing hockey with guys that are just a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. The puck's a little bit harder. The shots are a little bit harder. The passes are a little bit more crisp. And sometimes you forget that because you see the Q logo. Yeah. You see that the team logo, you see, you know, all these GMs up in the booth scouting you and you, you, you get um, distracted by that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, just find a way really quickly to get involved yeah and find a way to gain confidence and, and by gaining confidence you just have to you know make, make a mistake just i don't know just do something yeah to remind yourself that you're a hockey player getting like an intense board battle where like all yeah. the eyes are on you but you don't take a penalty and you make like a good play keeping it in the zone or heading in front of the net and like taking on someone in front getting some shots low some rebounds going like stuff like that right right yeah. away just know your do things in your game one more piece of it how much time are we at right now uh 47 so one more piece of advice i think is probably one of the better pieces of advice i was ever given that i'll give to you guys and girls um the the next step of going to junior hockey is the step where you go from midget whatever and you're the best player and you think you're going to go to junior and you think you're going to be the best player unless you're nathan mckinnon or Sidney crosby or whoever you're not going to be that guy. So get on the ice. Like I said, take a hit, but find your role. 
I'm not saying go out there and fight. I don't even know if you can fight anymore. All I'm saying is go in and find your role. If you are that first line guy, go for it. But I'm just telling you right now, the first line, the top six guys as a young guy going in, it's not gonna it's gonna be tough for you to get there. So you're gonna be on the bottom six. Find a way in the bottom six to become effective. Be on the defensive side of the puck. When you're changing, skate hard to the bench the bench. If you have a teammate that scores, Make sure that you're the first guy there to give me old tap on the ass, a nice goal. Just make sure you find ways to be effective in a different role. And I know that can be tough because you could come from midget and put up mm. 20, 30 goals. And that's, you think you're, you know, you're on the power play. But the quicker you get that out of your head and find ways to be effective on the, the fourth, the third line as a young guy, the, the better off you will be in that training camp. And the further you'll go, you might not make the team, but that's one thing I did. I knew I wasn't that top guy and I just found little things because those GMs, they're all, they're all hockey players. They Mm -hmm. all know how to play the game. They all know the game within the game. They know how to be in the right place at the right time when they played. So that's all you have to do. You have to be defensively smart. If there's a battle on the boards, make sure that your body is in front of your goaltender. Make sure that you're chipping the puck in. Make sure you're forechecking hard. Make sure you're not turning pucks over. I definitely recommend don't make any passes at the blue line. Like, just get it in. Just get the puck deep yeah. at the very beginning. Like, find your feet. Yeah. And just find your role. And just find a way to be seen at the end of the day. If you go through there and those GMs have their meeting, all right, who are we cutting, this guy or this guy? If you're the guy that just wasn't seen compared to the guy that made a couple mistakes, they'll probably pick the guy who made a couple mistakes because at least he tried. At least he he put his balls on the line and tried to, to do something. The guy that didn't really get seen. Yeah. He's scared to even put his balls on the line to do something. Yeah. So don't be afraid to try and make mistakes because, well, you know, don't make mistakes all the time. But at the very beginning of camp, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just get yeah. out there and find your groove. And the only way to find your groove is to make mistakes. Yeah, the worst thing you can be is unnoticeable. You can't be unnoticeable. It was, yeah. And think about all those NHLers and guys in the sea. Any player who played high level, they were the best play- Any of those guys at the Moose Camp, they were the best player on their team growing up all the way. They scored goals at Will and Midget Bantam. But not every team is going to be full of that. So, you know, there's other roles to fill. Yeah. Like, find your role and go get it. And do the little things. Like, I remember... I shouldn't be giving these are good little tip tidbits, but like, you know, if you guys have a practice, make sure that you're the guy that's sticking around to pick the pucks up. Mm. You know, like if you're in the dressing room and like the boys are leaving, they're done showering and you got to go like, just do your two cents. And maybe if you see like a ball of tape on the ground, pick up that ball of tape and just chuck it in the garbage. You see a couple towels that like aren't in the bin, pick up the towels and like help the trainer out to put the towels away. And, you, you, you just it's not just on the ice at these camps it's every just people talk especially these coaches gms and the coaches and gms go to the trainers and guess where the trainers are they're in the room next to you so i'm not saying if the trainer's there you know suck up yeah and make, make an ass of make yourself. it and pick up tape and yeah. do that but just just be aware that it's not just on the ice that everyone's looking at it's off the ice it's how you show up to camp it's is, is the guy's shirt tucked in is uh is he ready to go is you know there's just little things off the ice that count and if you can make sure that you get noticed in that aspect it can help for sure because a coach would rather coach an individual that's willing to learn and rather than a guy who's stuck in his ego and doesn't want to pick up that tape or you know pick up the towel that's on the ground or hang up his jersey in his stall that's another thing make sure your stall's clean like you know like make sure you put if you get to keep your gear there like put your elbow pads away correctly make sure your helmet's straight make sure you hunt your you hang up your your pants make sure you fold your socks at the end put them back nicely just anything to get you noticed anything literally anything 